Kamala Harris is the VP pick by Joe Biden. I'm tired of cops. I don't want to hear about cops. I've been telling you, this, to me, it seems like an ironic time for the Democratic Party to even consider a cop on the ticket. A time that's empirically, a time of dissent, of uprising of the people saying, hey, we're tired of what our police force is doing. People who didn't know police brutality was going on, unneeded murders, executions by state actors, uh, people that don't go to jail, killing killing citizens, beating citizens about the head. Um, all of this has been going on, and the solution to that, well, I'm going to go ahead and get me a, a cop running mate. And make no mistake about it. Kamala Harris was not just a cop. She called herself the top cop. This is a title that she wore proudly. I'm the top cop. And she was famous for hard sentencing, going with three strikes. She liked to cloak it in the idea that she was against kidnappers and murderers and child molesters. But the, the, that's a very small fraction of any police uh, community, any 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 mass incarceration, any incarcerated inmates. That's a very small group of people that do those type of actions. Most of the people that Kamala, Kamala Harris either locked up as a prosecutor in San Francisco or oversaw the locking up as being the top cop as attorney general, most of those cases were people of nonviolent nature, people with drug offenses, people with even less jaywalking, Okay. Kids that skipped school last week. Parents didn't even know about it. Now, now parents are being charged. This was primarily the bulk of the cases that Kamala Harris oversaw. So this this narrative that they're pushing that Kamala Harris was tough on crime and tough on you know only because she tried to get rid of the murders and the rapists and the child molesters and the terrorists. Like yeah, okay, like that's like five percent of the cases that she dealt with. So let's make that clear. Let's not be idiots and think that there are a bunch of mass murderers just running around. You know, there's a lot There's a lot more Jeffrey smoked some weed and got caught than Jeffrey Dahmer's running around. We do understand that that's not reality, that, that, that they're trying to a false narrative. So, you know, Kamala, and look, I was surprised that Biden went, because I thought Biden would be, like, last thing Biden went is the person, Kamala Harris is one of the few, if not the only, if not the only person running during the, during the 2020 primary, Democratic primary, who actually said, hey, I believe Tara Reid. She's like the only one that, that, I, that, that I'm in. Hold on. Let I see. Uh, this is an article from CNBC. This was dated April 29, 2020. Multiple female politicians are throwing their support behind former vice president and apparent Democratic nominee Joe Biden. Harris was the only one who was like, I believe, women. Not Gillibrand. Not Stacey Abrams. In fact, they caped for him. Clinton. Clinton supported Biden. Pelosi. Everybody. And I'm not saying that Harris didn't support Biden, but she was the only one that was like, I believe women at a time doing this. So that that's one reason why I thought there was no way that uh, Joe Biden would pick Kamala Harris at this point. I mean, not to mention, she went out to him on, uh, on national TV about busing with this elaborate uh, narrative of she was this poor little girl and he was the evil, you know, the evil bus, bus person. And he was... He was, he, he, piled around, he piled around a lot with segregationists. He had no problem with getting their support and reaching out for their support. So, but I'm telling you guys, I just, I just didn't expect this at this point. You know, there have been a couple of people that hit me up, they're like, Tim, ha, 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 look at you, look how great Kama's doing. I'm like, I don't know what you're happy about. Why Why are you glad that we got a top cop? What makes you happy about that? I'm not happy about it. People say, Tim Blackwood, there's always room to grow. Well, there's going to be a lot of growing that needs to be done. A lot of growing, like quickly. What pill is that you're, you're suggesting that Kamala Harris took? 
She was not a trailblazer in the progressive arena of, of, of governing when she was attorney general. She was not a trailblazer forging new paths and knocking down barriers and making a new way of policing. And No, she, she, she said body cameras are cool, but would not mandate for every police department under her purview to even have to wear them. And she was the top cop. She wouldn't mandate it. So you can wear it if you want to, but you don't have to. Hey, go with whatever your department says. That wasn't that long ago, like 10 years ago, maybe six years ago. Just as she was only a first, she had, she'd been reelected to the Senate yet. Isn't she a first term? So what I'm saying is the history of Kamala Harris is pretty fresh and new. But these people are still excited. Some of them are rubbing my face in it as if they won something. I want to know what you won. Tell me what you get out of this. It doesn't unite the true left. It further solidifies maybe the black vote, but folks, they were going to get the black vote anyway, right? I mean, Joe, did Joe Biden really have to get a black running mate to get the black vote? 98% of black women voted for Hillary Clinton and she had Tim Kaine. Now there's something else at play here. Something else is at play. Kamala Harris, and I called this early, I called it very early, I said that Kamala Harris is very dangerous because when she's on, she is on. That's what I believe. Now, when she's off, she's off. That's bad. Get a little too loosey-goosey, problems can happen. A little bit word salad But when Kamala Harris is on point, like many other people, when she on, she on fire. And you stack that against, I felt many people in the field, she could serve a problem. There's no, there's no secret that I endorse and supported Bernie Sanders. Not just in 2020, but also in 2016. And I stay true to that because I believe that he was the person who could defeat, best defeat Trump and best bring about policies that matter. I know there are people watching who are very upset about it. I want you to I understand your, your anger, your resentment or your bitterness or whatever. I get that too. I'm not happy about this. I wanted a progressive, a truly progressive candidate. I feel like Kamala Harris has been voting progressive as of late, in order and preparation for this type of opportunity. But has she been this way? Go back three years? No. Go back two years in some cases? No. She supported ICE detentions, deportations, against legalizing cannabis, not for the Green New Deal, warmed up to Medicare for All, then backed away from it. There was nothing there. But lately, as of the last year or so, she started to vote better, vote more progressive than most other members of the Senate. Look it up. I looked it up. You got to look it up. So at the end of the day, with Kamala Harris, we have a record of this person who they have on tape saying, (laughs) laughing at liberals who wanted to build more schools. Instead of more prisons, she laughed in the video. <laughs> build more. What you wanna? You wanna build more schools? We need more jails. I tell these liberals, there was video. This is and she wasn't saying that in 1980 or the early 90s during the crack era. She was saying it in the 2000s, in the mid 2000s. She's literally laughing at people trying to come up with new ways to to police. And at the time. She was on the doorstep of being attorney general. She ran to the right of the more leftist, more liberal attorney general that was already in place. Do you understand? I know more about Kamala Harris's record than I, the, the lab, that the, 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 the phony fake lab, the corrupt lab technician who was dabbing into evidence, destroying evidence, and Kamala Harris didn't want to throw out those cases. Or oh, maybe we're talking about Kamala Harris not wanting to free nonviolent offenders because she needed to she wanted to prison labor for California. Didn't want California to actually hire firemen. She wanted to be able to use inmates as free labor or next to next to as close as you could get to slave labor. 
We're not talking about rapists and killers. We're talking about people got caught with weed, people owe child support, people got traffic tickets, people driving on unsuspended license. These are the type of people we're talking about. Stop in your mind always picturing the worst case scenario, of the worst offender possible to justify mass incarceration. That's not what our prisons are full of. Hell, half the people in prison don't even haven't even been convicted of anything yet. They just can't make bail, which Kamala Harris was against reforming our bail system as well. See, I know more about her than, than I want to know because I've done several videos on it. And though we know all these things about Kamala Harris, at the end of the day, this is an excellent choice for Joe Biden. Man, I think this, and I know people are going to disagree. Listen to me. Listen, I'm not saying I want him to choose her. I've already stated Nina Turner, Barbara Lee, Karen Bass, much more favorable choices in my opinion. But for Joe Biden, Joe Biden for him? Oh, this is great. It's going to be very difficult for Donald Trump to frame the top cop is soft on crime. This is going to be kind of difficult. It's all taken away. So we're entering into a new moment in time. This is a new time. This is Donald Trump, Mike Pence versus Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. And I think that this, I, I think that this is a, a, a favorable matchup for the Democratic Democratic Party. What, you think he's going to get Susan Rice? Come on. Come on. So, and, and once again, I got to keep saying it, that doesn't mean I endorse it. I'm just telling you what I see, what I'm reading, what I feel, based on what's out there. Also, how could Donald Trump bash Kamala Harris when he gave her a campaign when she was running for Attorney General? I mean, him and Ivanka gave $5,000 and $1,000 and $1,000 to her election campaign back in 2011 and 13 and 14. But now all of a sudden she's a horrible individual. She's a radical leftist. No, you and you, you, Mr. That's so nice. Don't be so nice. Donald Trump, you gave her money. You gave her money. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. That hypocrisy is not a big deal. He gave to Hillary Clinton as well and still ran against her and called her every name in the book and people still brought it as if they weren't on the same team to begin with. I guess they'll do the same thing with Kamala Harris. Like I stated, there is, there is, there is a litany of information out there concerning Kamala Harris. The Trump allies attack Harris as liberal, emphasizing her past debate clashes with Biden. But what happened? What so so what's the deal? At the end of the day, what's what's happening? What's what's the fallout? Here's the fallout for anyone who doubts my political acumen and trying to judge the weather. I, I, I'll, I'll never say that I'm the most uh actively engaged uh, in, in, in the polls. I'm not, I'm not a poll guy, but um, if I was a person who lived my life looking at polls and looking at the the, the way the wind is blowing, Biden's big day, $10.8 million pour into Act Blue in four hours after the VP announcement. I would just like to guess what was Trump's. I didn't get time to look this up. Somebody look up how much money poured into the RNC coffers when uh, when. Trump announced that Pence would be his running mate. I got a feeling it wasn't 10.8 million in four hours. I just, I'm just guessing. So that lack of enthusiasm that I felt people had for Joe Biden, I think people are going to have that for Kamala Harris. This closes the enthusiasm gap. I thought there were more people that were happy or more, more energized to get rid of Trump than they were to elect Joe Biden. But now this gives the gives certain people an opportunity to be excited. Excited. And it's not look, and it's not just excited about Kamala Harris, but to them as as all as we know from identity, it's about what she represents as a a woman of color. 
And it's also the probability, the possibility that we all talk about that Joe Biden is a one-term president. So, in effect, effectively, we could be looking at our first female president and our first, yeah, of their first Asian president and our first, I don't know what her mom is Hindu. Uh, I, I don't know. Immigrant parents president? I don't know. What Ro kind of call it? Multicultural win for so many? Okay. So it's a lot, it's a lot happening here. We got to wrap our heads around it. At the end of the day, I respect the hell out of the fact that black women who identify with Kamala Harris and Asian women and Latino women and all women who identify with her in a, in a way that's beyond just the political theater at the moment, but what it represents for, for, the, for the psyche of young girls, the psyche of young women who, who are grappling with it and trying to achieve in this country and feel that they're, the, you know, the, the, the sledgehammer of misogyny or, or any of that, right? I want you I want I just want to explain express that I support your endeavors for equality and for uh success wholeheartedly. But I'm more concerned with what her policies mean for those people as opposed to what she looked like. And I know that's easy for me to do because I had my Obama moment. Okay? I recognize that. I recognize I had my Obama moment. <clears throat> okay? So I get that. I don't want to sound like a hypocrite. I wasn't woke then. Okay? And as I begin to become more and more woke, I besmirched the Obama moment that I thought I had, and I saw it for what it was, which was a way to cloud the judgment and change the conversation about what we tangibly get as people and what this representative narrative crap is all about, what this appears to be. And I understand that there are people who have to learn that on their own, and that pains me. Because as you get up to speed on the, on the trickery and the tomfoolery of our political system, of, of the narratives of both of these parties, one wing, one wing, same bird, I get it. But you missed the point that it ain't about who, what they look like, what they smell like, what they taste like, what they listen to, what's in their what's in their iPod. None of that matters if what's in their policy don't help you. So that's where my focus, my focus must always be. So let's go to a little bit. So this show is going to be about reactions, about comedy. Before we go to phone calls, let me just bring you up to speed on this. She is uh, a person that's told many, many stories that weren't true. She's very big into raising taxes. She wants to slash funds for our military at a level that nobody can even believe. She uh, is against fracking. Fracking is, she's against petroleum products. I mean, how do you do that and go into Pennsylvania or Ohio or Oklahoma or the great state of Texas. She's against uh, fracking. Fracking's a big deal. Uh, she's in favor of socialized medicine, where you're going to lose your doctors, you're going to lose your plan. She wants to take uh, your health care plans away from 180 million Americans. 180 million Americans that are very happy with their health insurance, and she wants to take that away. So she was my number one pick. I mean, she was, as they would say, because hopefully you'll start college football, she was my number one draft pick. And we'll see how she works out. She did very, very poorly in the uh, primaries, as you know. She was expected to do well. And she was, she ended up at right around 2% and spent a lot of money. She had a lot of things happening. And so I was a little surprised that he picked her. I've been watching her for a long time, and I was a little surprised. She was extraordinarily nasty to uh, Kavanaugh, Ju Judge Kavanaugh then, now Justice Kavanaugh. She was nasty to a level that was just uh, a horrible thing, the way she was, the way she treated 
now Justice Kavanaugh. And I won't forget that soon. So she did very poorly in the primaries, and now she's chosen. So let's see how that all works out. So, you know, as we expected, you know, you know, the, of course, the people on the right, folks on the right are going to come out with, you know, guns blazing, going out to Kamala Harris. I don't know how effective it'll be, and I guess Trump is just getting up to speed. It's like they just gave him a script of what to say, and he's trying to hit the talking points of uh, uh, fracking and uh, fracking and uh, uh, other stuff and mean and, and Kavanaugh and, uh, you know, uh, he's gonna, I'm sure he'll get more lively as it starts to settle in. But as I stated, this is a very uphill battle for for Donald Trump. I mean, I look at Donald Trump as this being a race between Donald Trump, Kamala Harris, and Joe Biden. It's it's two against one, and uh, I don't even count Pence. He's non-existent. He's an empty suit. He doesn't matter. But, okay, so, so what's the reaction to Kamala Harris on the left? Well, hey, hey, I'm sorry. <laughs> We know the reaction on the left. What's the reaction in the Democratic Party? <laughs> There's a difference, Johnson. Karen Bass, who I was pulling for, she says, Kamala Harris is a great choice for vice president. Her tenacious pursuit of justice and relentless advocacy for the people is what is needed right now. That, among other things. Mayor Pete, who I haven't heard from in a while. Jesus. I almost forgot this guy. Uh, Kamala Harris fights tirelessly for justice, dignity, and equality for all Americans. I'm thrilled she's joining the ticket. I can't wait to call her my vice president. Andrew Young says, congratulations, Kamala. You're set to make history. Let's win. Castro says, historic moment. Kamala Harris is a talented, dynamic, groundbreaking leader who will make a fantastic VP. She's already generating excitement among voters. And I know she'll be a fantastic partner to Joe Biden as we work to defeat Trump and bring our nation together. Mike Bloomberg says, the best executives know that you're only as good as the team you build. That's a lesson that clearly escapes our current president. But Joe Biden just showed he gets it. Kamala Harris is a smart choice who will be a strong partner in the White House. And I can buy her, too. Hi, I'm proud to call Kamala Harris my dear friend and sister. And next year, I'll even be more proud to call her our vice president. This is history. Kamala is a trailblazer who will serve this country well as the first black and Asian American woman on a major party ticket. My name is Cory Booker, and I approve this message. We need more love. Elizabeth Warren, Kamala Harris will be a... Oh, no. Got to be fair. Kamala Harris will be a great partner to Joe Biden in making our government a powerful force for good in the fight for social, racial, and economic justice. And Bernie Sanders, oh, for the dagger... Congratulations to Kamala Harris. Congratulations to Kamala Harris, who will make history as our next vice president. She understands what it takes to stand up for working people, fight for health care for all, and take down the most corrupt administration in history. Let's get to work and win. Ooh, painful, painful, painful. And as painful as that is, What's he supposed to do? Yeah, I know what you say you would do. I know what I'd say I would do. Eat a gun. Uh, move to Siberia. Put myself in a liquor coma. I don't know. But I'm saying, what is Bernie supposed to do? What is Yang supposed to do? What are all these people? What, are, what is Booker's? What are they supposed to Everyone's supposed to be happy and shiny. And is it possible maybe some people believe that Donald Trump is a horrible president? I think he's a horrible president. I think he's a horrible person. I think he was a horrible person before he became president. I think he was a horrible person to begin with. Very selfish. Very self-centered guy. Okay. 
And now, and now, and now we we look at this. We say, okay, but I'm not saying that Joe Biden is a better guy. I really don't think Joe Biden is a better person. I know people tell me he is. Michael Moore told me that Joe Biden is a great guy. He's a really nice guy. A really nice guy who likes segregation and didn't like busing and, you know, didn't, you know, architected the 94 crime bill that locked up a lot of people that look like me for a little bit of weed and a little bit of coke. That's what he looks like. But at the end of the day, here we are in time, and what are we going to deal with now? What are we What are we going to do now? I'm telling you guys, I strongly feel that this is a winning ticket. It's a winning ticket. You cannot tell. Look, I, I, oh, this is what I want to say, and I hope people, you know, the people that quote this, I hope you get this right. I have a ton of reservations about Kamala Harris. I've expressed those profusely in hours worth of video content that I've produced surrounding Kamala Harris. I stand by the video content. I created it. Please don't question my allegiance to progressive values and what I stand for and my dis- and my t- my take and my stance against uh, mass incarceration, over-policing, racial profiling, police brutality, and the things of that nature. So please don't question that. If you got to question it, you need to go watch the tape. But I want to make it very crystal clear that I understand the connection, the emotional connection that some will have to the opportunity of the first black female president. That is a big thing. That is huge. And I understand the emotions that that incites in people. And that's why I say this is historic. And if you have any hope, any hope, if you call yourself a progressive or person on the left, of building any type of um, grassroots or a coalition, you need to get in touch with how people actually feel and why they feel that way. And understand that this moment and what that means for people, and why, uh, and, and why that why it matters. You don't have to agree, but you damn sure need to try to understand why people feel the way they feel. I'm not talking about politicians. I'm talking about voters. I'm talking about the people, the people, not 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 the politicians who who are in the party trying to stay alive in the party. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about why people may feel the way that they feel. Why my sister may feel the way she feels. Why my cousins may feel the way they feel. This is like a perfect storm. We got Breonna Taylor, black woman gunned down in her own home. What does Kamala Harris have to do with it? In fact, Kamala Harris is probably wouldn't have prosecuted the cops who did it if it happened in California and she was still attorney general. And that's the reality of the situation. And that's what sticks me. Man, it stabs me. But those folks, those voters would not believe that. If that was the case, that if, if, if they, will, they will not believe that scenario. It's how, it's in the DNA of the United States of America color. And it is, it is, and, 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 and then you add gender. On top of race, you add gender. I understand we live in America and I understand the power of where we are with class, where we are with race. I understand I'm a black man. I've lived my life a black man, married to a black woman, raised by black parents, lived in black neighborhoods, went to black schools. Um, I understand the elements of, um, you know, not that young, not that old, been around the block, know the stories of the civil rights movement, understand where we are now in conjunction to that. I get it. Here's the thing, guys. If there was a white candidate who laughed about schooling, improving the schools of black children, and said what we need is more prisons, there'd be no way in hell that candidate would be elected or nominated for VP 
of the Democratic Party. Anyone, anyone who forces their mouth to shame you or me or anyone else for pointing out the hypocrisy, the unfettered, unmitigated hypocrisy of the Democratic Party. Now, I'm not faulting the average voter who has no idea, who has just been informed by the information that I've just delivered to you, but those who know it and still perform on Twitter and Facebook with your bullshit comments as if you don't know reality. You got to be ashamed of yourselves. You are a hypocrite of the highest order. Seven days a week and twice on Sundays. 